Hey guys, my name's Corbin Dunn, and this is my Falcon Automata project. This was a difficult project that took me a long time to make, probably about three months of sporadic work. My goal is to inspire you to create something new and to hopefully learn some cool tips and tricks on the CNC machine for how to do weird, interesting things like this project. I'm sharing the CAD file and the STL models. Link is in the description. Go and download them for free. You could try to make this project if you want, but beware, it's pretty difficult and it does have some rough edges that need to be worked out. So what was my inspiration for this project? Well, one of the things that really got me interested in it was Amao Chan, hopefully I'm saying his name right. Check out some of the videos of the things that he has designed and 3D printed. They are just amazing. I printed up one of the turtle ones myself and it was really cool. I wanted to do something like that. But the thing that really got me started was seeing this swimming shark from Blake McFarland on BM Sculptures. He created this cool shark automata and I realized, hey, I need to finish some of the ideas I've had in my head to do something on my own. So how to get started in something like this? For an organic shape, I wanted to do something in Blender because creating a mesh is pretty easy in Blender that you can kind of tweak. I spent quite a bit of time trying to draw my own falcon or bird shape but I didn't quite like it. Eventually I found a free shape that I could heavily modify and create a low poly model to kind of give a faceted look to the ending shape. This worked pretty well and I was pretty happy with it. I split the shape up in Blender to have the wings be in three separate parts, the body, the middle wing, and the outer wing. Once I had the bird constructed, I decided to do a 3D print test to make sure it kind of would work right. And after printing it, I realized I should probably change the shape to be a little bit more durable if I want to make it out of wood. Some of the thin wing parts would probably snap off based on how the grain works with wood. So I modified it again. From Blender, I exported the model, each of the pieces, as an STL. And then I could import the STL into Fusion 360 to create all my mechanisms. One of the first things I had to figure out was how would I connect each of the wing pieces together and have them move? I decided to just use regular metal hinges and I figured I could probably cut some type of slot and insert them in the wood and glue them in place. I just found the model on McMaster Car because you can directly import it into Fusion and use it and that worked pretty well. Once all the wings moved in the model, I had to figure out how to make them all look realistic so the bird was sort of flying. One of the most difficult parts was figuring out where to place all my hinges and all my rods and shafts to make everything move in the particular animation that I wanted. And a lot of people who make automata just do it by experimentation. And eventually that's what I did. And in Fusion, the easiest way that I found to do that was to create one master sketch where I could kind of tweak the positions of everything and then see if it would work. And I would tweak it again and again and eventually I got something that looked pretty good. Now, it would really be cool if I could have just done this in software, give it the motion I want, and have it compute something for the actual positions of things. And Disney has actually done this. They made a white paper on computational design of mechanical characters. I'll put a link to it. Super fascinating, but none of the software they made is shared, so I couldn't use that. Once I had the basic motion, I had to connect everything together with gears. Inside of Fusion 360, I used the standard spur gear plugin to create some of the basic gear shapes. Now, I haven't created any gears ever before, so this was a learning experience. And I think if I was to do it again, I would use a different plugin, but this did work to allow me to create some gears that mesh together properly. But since it was my first time, I needed to start testing things. And so that's the point when I jumped over to the CNC machine. I picked quarter inch Baltic birch plywood for the gears. I used double sided tape to hold down the plywood. I didn't want to have any tabs to have to clean up afterwards. For the frame, I used quarter inch plywood that I had laying around and I started out by drilling some of the holes that the gears would go into. I went way too fast and it burned the holes. I had to slow it down a lot in RPMs. I also made a mistake when I was cutting the profile. I didn't think about the hold downs and I cut into them. We all make mistakes, it's just part of it. So later I started using a mini spoil board where I drilled some holes into it and just used the T-Track to bolt it down. And the whole reason I did this is just to avoid drilling into or milling into my main spoil board. I bought some quarter inch aluminum round rods from Home Depot and cut them into little pieces. I needed them to move smoothly 
through the frame so it would just rotate. I ended up using a quarter inch reamer to just lightly ream out the holes to be slightly larger until they fit in really easily. For the bird body, I decided to use Vectric V-Carve to carve it out, and this was a mistake, and I'll show you why in just a little bit. One of the things you can do is you can run the simulation, and you can kind of see where you're going to have some empty area. Inside that empty area, I drilled some holes in order to just screw down the piece and hold onto my table. Now, I'm not a big fan of using screws to hold down your workpiece because it ends up wrecking the spoil board that you screw into, and you probably can't use the same screw hole in the same spot again and again without it moving around a little bit. You also have the potential to hit the screw, which eventually I did. So I started the 3D roughing by using a quarter inch down cut bit. I use a down cut bit because I have less chip out problems with a down cut bit compared to an up cut bit. Up cut bits are great if you want to do a really deep cut. The finishing paths was just using a quarter inch ball nose. If you haven't done any two-side machining before, you have mirrored alignment holes in your workpiece compared to the spoil board, and you can just put some dowels into the spoil board and align your piece perfectly for the other operation. I drilled some more holes for some more screws to hold down this operation and screwed it on down. So I used a 3 8 of an inch down cut bit for the roughing operation and once it started to get pretty low I realized I might have a collision and sure enough a little bit later I heard that weird terrible noise of it hitting and burning and I saw that it had collided just a little bit. I hit stop on the CNC machine and brought the spindle up. The roughing pass was basically done and so at this point I just decided to export my finishing pass with a quarter inch ball nose and just run that. I didn't think it would have a collision because it wasn't going to go as deep. Now guys, this is one of the points where I really like Fusion 360. You can do simulations with the actual bit length and have it tell you if it's going to have a collision or not. Vectric V-Carve, which I use for this toolpath, doesn't do that. V-Carve is easier to set up, but you can have problems like this. So at this point, I decided to switch over and use Fusion 360 for all my toolpaths. So I glued up another piece of cherry, and while that was drying, I could start cleaning up some of the tabs off of the falcon body. I ended up using a little drum sander on the Dremel to clean up the tabs. This kind of worked the best for me. Switching over to Fusion 360 for my two-side machining of the wingtips, took a little bit more time to figure out how to do things, but once I did, things started working great. I think I'm going to do a separate video on how to do this because there are a couple steps that are essential to get it right. Switching to Fusion 360 gave me a lot better results. I wasn't having any issues with collisions. Things were coming out really clean. The edges were clean and things worked well. The way I planned to attach the wing to the rods or the control arms was to use some little wooden hinges, which we can see here. Now on the first wing that I cut out, I had that shape, the indentation for the hinge in the wing, and I just let it machine it out with a quarter inch ball nose. But this left not a very desirable uh, slot to put it into, and I had to end up using a chisel to chisel it out straight. The way I solved this was to actually create a sketch on my stock piece inside of Fusion 360, and then I could project that shape down onto the sketch. And then I have a perfect rectangle which needs to be machined out. I could then create a better toolpath in Fusion 360 that would do a 2D pocket with a smaller bit. And in this case, I used a eighth of an inch spiral down cut bit to just create that, that little pocket that just left a little bit of round corners that I had to square up. I used a three quarter inch piece of cherry for the base. I created a nice round shape and fusion and then just machined it out with a nice profile edge and a couple of holes that the frame would fit into. I found a scrap piece of half inch round stock rod steel that I had laying around and that was going to be my middle piece to hold up the body of the falcon.
The little crank arms and the actual rods that connect everything together, I also machined out a quarter inch birch plywood. There's nothing fancy about this. I had to modify the shape a little bit from what I initially started with, but cutting them out was pretty easy. Next, I needed to mill a slot for the hinges, and this was hard to figure out. What I decided to do was to take it to Fusion 360 and then create a inverse shape of the wing. And this way I could create a soft jaw clamp that could clamp it together on my vertical work table and hold it while I machined it. I machined these out of three quarter inch MDF. I just held them down with some double sided tape, clamping them down temporarily to get them to squish and hold really tightly and then just machined it, a roughing pass, and then a finishing pass. The way I could use this jig is by putting some quarter 20 bolts into my vertical T-tracks. I could slide the jig roughly to where I needed it, and then I could put the matching top of it, the clamping part on, put my wing piece inside of it, and then clamp it down tight. This allowed me to machine it out, but one of the problems it was having was getting it at the right precise location. To get it at the right location, I would look in Fusion 360 and see roughly how far the jig was down from a particular location. I could then use some calipers to mark that on my piece with a couple of little lines. And then all I had to do was line up those two lines inside the jig to get it precisely located. I also needed to find a specific origin in order to machine from. And having this jig made it easy, I could just use one of the corners of the jig itself. I could use my Heimer 3D sensor to find that particular origin and set it on the machine for the operations. I could then go and machine out the slot. I use a 1 16th of an inch down cut bit. An up cut bit would have been better, but this was all I had at that time. The first time I did it, it wasn't aligned quite right and didn't go deep enough because my Z-axis didn't have enough travel. The way I solved that for future ones was just to move the piece up higher. And the way that I fixed the one that didn't go deep enough was to use a Dremel bit, a Dremel disc, I guess, and just Dremel it a little bit deeper. That did make the hole a little bit sloppy, but it was good enough. Now I tried the same technique to hold the body together, but that really wasn't working just because of the shape of the body. In the end, I kind of realized it didn't matter too much as long as it was in the right rough location. So I just kind of clamped down as best I could, and then I could go ahead and machine the body too. Those little wing hinge pieces that I talked about earlier where I made a slot in the wing for them, I had to make next. I just cut out a small piece of maple and I used some double sided tape to hold them down onto my CNC table. I milled them out with an eighth of an inch down cut bit for the roughing pass and then an eighth of an inch tapered ball nose for the finishing pass. But I had to create a hole down the middle to slide some type of shaft, and this was a little bit tricky. At first, I just tried using a drill press to drill them, well, my mill in this case, but they weren't aligned perfectly. So I went and machined a little Mickey Mouse shape out on my CNC machine out of a piece of MDF to hold them very precisely. I could shove these down in, it had zero tolerance, and that held it down enough to run a eighth of an inch bit down and out. I had to hold the shafts onto my mainframe by using some snap rings. So I took the little metal pieces over to my lathe and just turned a tiny little groove onto them. At this point, I figured I had enough of this stuff kind of figured out to go ahead and finish the pieces. I just used some Osmo oil on the top of the wood because I had it around. And then I just kind of shined up some of the other stuff. Now, after working on this project for so long, I was really excited to start assembling it to see if it would actually work. The general assembly process was to use a little bit of paste wax on anything that would move. 
I could use the snap rings to hold the shafts on. I mixed up some 5 minute epoxy and glued the hinges in on the wings. First I did the wing tip to the wing middle and then I let it dry overnight. Then I did the wing middle to the body and let it dry overnight. I just aligned things up by eye. Once I started to get everything together, I realized the shafts probably wouldn't be able to sustain the amount of force that was needed. And even with a little bit of glue, they would probably slip and break. And this is what happened right away. This is the point where I wish I would have put more thought into the design. I didn't have enough spacing between a lot of the moving parts to have some other locking mechanism. So what I decided to do was just to use the Dremel to create a little slot in the aluminum shaft and the wood rod or the arm, the crank arm. And then I could put a little piece of metal, a little piece of a bike spoke that I cut down short into that area and then use some five minute epoxy. So it's kind of like a keyed shaft essentially that's glued in. This was a total hack of a solution and I'm not really happy with it. I really need to think of a better way to do it. And the one for the crank arm itself uh, keeps breaking because the force on the crank arm with the small gear is pretty large to make it turn. Now the thing actually does work. So I'm pretty excited that it actually works, but I think things could have been a lot better. So let me talk about some things that could be done to improve it. The first thing is the crank arm could be a lot better. It's really hard to force it to turn it around and you have to be kind of gentle with it. It's heavy to lift the arms up and then all of a sudden the arms want to fall down by, by their weight. I think this could have been made better by having a larger gear that it was turning because then the force would be a lot smaller. That was what, what would be needed to, to just turn it and make it work. The way the gears are connected is really a hack and I really need to figure out a better way to do that. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the project. I mean, it works and it's pretty cool to kind of see it flying there. And just remember, if you want to give it a try, download the files for free and mess around with it. Maybe you can make some improvements. Thanks everyone.